Welcome to The Liberating Secret with your host, author and teacher, Sylvia Pierce. The Liberating Secret is dedicated to revealing the mystery of the gospel, which is Christ in you, the only hope of glory. Let's join Sylvia Pierce for today's lesson. Welcome to The Liberating Secret. My name is Sylvia Pierce, and I'm delighted to be with you again today. I'm in chapter 2 of Ephesians, and boy, we've had a, a hearty lesson last time about how we can know that Jesus Christ is in us, who is the only hope of glory. How can we know that? And how can we, we receive that? You only know something spiritually because you've received Christ, and He spiritually tells you and, and illuminates you to what you already have in Christ. You see... Most of Christianity knows that we have to receive Christ by faith and it's by grace. Hopefully you do know that, that it's not by your works, that you didn't work yourself to heaven, work your way to heaven, uh, and you don't work your way to hell. You just, you believe your way to heaven or you believe your way to hell. That's all, that's, that's all there is because that's the function of the human being is faith, is faith, is what we believe. Either we believe God and we believe what he says and his provision that he's provided in the Lord Jesus Christ, or we believe uh, what we think is ourselves, which is really the lies of the devil. We believe either the truth or the lie. Now, Jesus said that he was going to give us the spirit of truth, and that's the Holy Spirit himself. He is the spirit of truth, and this spirit of truth will lead us into all truth. So instead, you know, one thing I hate is all this, well, it's your opinion. Well, what do you think? Well, what do you think? Well, what's your opinion? What's my... It doesn't matter what our opinions are. It doesn't matter what we think. It's really, it just matters what God says about it because we're either going to call God a liar or we're going we're, we're gonna to say, Lord, I bow to you because you're the one that has spoken truth over me and I bow to that truth and admit that, I, that I've called you a liar most of my life. My goodness, people don't realize what we're doing. We're calling God a liar most of our life. You know, I have a friend that lives in Hopkinsville, Kentucky, and um, Ronnie Luttrell is his name. Well, he lives in Pembroke, actually, Kentucky. And he says, I used to live the liar's life. All my life, I lived the liar's life until I found Jesus, and he gave me the truth. So that's a wonderful way to put it, and I think it is light, right that we're living a lie. We're walking in a lie, we're living a lie, and we speak the lie. Wow, most of the time. So now God has given us a new heart, a new mind, a new way to speak, and it's all in the new creation. It's all in the inner man. And he did it all by grace because every person that just calls upon the name of the Lord and cries out for his mercy, he shall be saved. The Bible says it's so simple. It's not hard. It's not, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're joining a church. You may, but that, that has nothing to do with our initial salvation whatsoever. Uh, it doesn't mean that you have to be baptized a certain way uh, because baptism actually points to the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ, and we need to stay on the point of what these symbols really mean. And of course, the body of Christ is the church. The church is not a building or a denomination or a, 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 a concept or a mental ascent of what we think we believe. <laughs> Actually, it is not. It is a person. It's receiving the person of Christ. And when we receive him, then he will be the new workmanship inside of us. He will be the new worker. He will be the one manifesting himself out through us, through good works. You see, the good works that we do are not our good works. It's not by flesh's good works. It's by the good works of the Lord, working, working his workmanship out through us. And, we all, we, and that all happens by faith. It all happens. It's a free gift, and it happens by faith. And our only part is to receive it and take it and believe it and stand on it and God will cause you to know it. You see, we first believe 
And then as we take it, because we're going to be uh, tested as soon as we take a spiritual truth. We live in a lost world. We live in a world of lies. So uh, everything around you will testify the opposite. You just stand in the truth that Christ has set you free. And the Holy Spirit will confirm in you your own freedom in Christ. And you will be praising God the rest of your life, I promise you. Because you will know it's only by His mercy that He saved you. You didn't understand your blindness. You didn't understand how dead, spiritually dead you really were. And, um, and because we were held by the powers of darkness. And now through faith in Christ, He unloosed those binds, those ropes, those chains that bound us up. And He frees us in Christ. And, um, but interesting though, the Bible calls us a new slave. Now this is a love slave. It is not... You see, Satan, uh, through sin, has made us a slave. That's for sure. We're a slave to sin. And so um, we're a slave to Satan, really. And he uses and misuses and corrupts our minds and blinds us and, 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 and absolutely um, rapes us, actually, of, of the truth because we end up just testifying his lies all the time. And so... Now, when you've received Christ, now you've received the spirit of truth. And I always say that's why the first, first Christians spoke in tongues, because their whole life they've been speaking lies. They, only, they ran into uh, the truth because Christ is the truth. The disciples knew Christ and could hear him, but they couldn't really hear him, not until they were born again of the Holy Spirit of God and could hear the spirit of truth. And so... Um, so now let's move on into second chapter. Just read that it's all by grace, all by faith. And I said it last time. I will say it again. The gospel never changes. Sometimes people think the gospel changes. What do I mean? Well, the initial gospel, and most people know this, that we're saved by faith alone and not by our own works. But I always say, why do we change the gospel? <laughs> because we're sanctified by faith alone and not by our own works again. And we're even glorified by faith alone and not by trying to get ourselves glorified. Okay, I couldn't get myself saved. I can't get myself holy. And I can't get myself glorified and put into heaven. You see, I can do nothing. It is not of myself whatsoever. I will not have any bragging rights in heaven. I will not say, oh, Lord, look what I've done to make myself holy. Look, look how good I was because I read the Bible through 10 times or I prayed day and night. None of those things. Those things are wonderful if they're led by the Spirit, but they can be a lot of works if they're uh, dead works, really, if they're not led by the Spirit because the children of God are led by the Spirit of God. Now, God might lead you into reading the Bible 10 times and Hallelujah, that's wonderful. You're going to know the Bible a whole lot better than I do. I haven't read it through 10 times. But you see, maybe you, you, you're not led to do that. That's okay too, you know. It is, it is important to understand what God says about you. And here we do have a word that testifies the truth. So we need to know the truth. And you're going to find that in the word. So I recommend that you start reading all of Paul's letters. Now, a lot of people start by reading the book of John. You start out, you're saved, you want to read the book of John. That's great. Read that. See what Jesus said. See, read the Gospels. Read Acts and see what the early apostles did. But look at what Paul says. You know why I'm saying this? There is a verse in Romans chapter 2. And I'm just I'm going to turn right to it right now because it's too important to pass. It's in chapter 2. In verse 16, and this is what it says. In that day when God shall judge the secrets of men, he's going he's gonna to judge your... If you have secrets, you think you just have secrets to yourself? No, God knows everything. God knows exactly what you're thinking. He's going to judge those secrets. Everything will come to the light. And it says, by Jesus Christ. But listen, according... To Paul's gospel. Wow. 
So you think it's important to understand Paul's gospel? I think it is. That's why I preach it and teach it all the time. We're going to be judged by Paul's gospel. You better know what it is. You better have the eyes of your understanding enlightened. And that's what it's saying in Ephesians, to know exactly what your full inheritance is in Christ because it's yours and it's a free gift. And salvation is always a free gift. And if we change the gospel, we don't change it. Uh, we say, oh, we're saved by faith, but we're, we're made holy and we please God by, by works. No, that's not true. Because um, even though James says, oh, I have to bring up James because everybody will then bring that verse. Oh, um, uh, James says that it's not by faith alone. It's also by works. Well, James is coming from a different point of view, but he's saying the same thing Paul's saying. They're not contradicting each other. Paul is saying initially we all have to come by faith in Christ. But if what we're expressing and living out of is not peace, love, joy, long-suffering, the fruit of the Spirit, you see, then uh, we better be looking at the fruit. So James is looking at the fruit, not the root. Paul is looking at the root. Paul is saying the root better be Christ, better be that you're, you're putting your faith in him. James is saying, well, the fruit of that needs to be the fruit of the Spirit, not the fruit of your hard work, the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering. So we could, we could read them all. You get the point. So actually, they're saying the same thing because it's not real faith, it's false faith, if you're having faith in yourself, if you're having faith in your denomination, if you're having faith in all the things that you think you've done, that's false faith. We have to have faith in Christ, in Christ alone. Only hope of glory. Only hope. All right. Now let me read verse 8 again. This is a fabulous verse. For by grace you are saved through faith and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Not by works, not by self-effort works lest any man should boast. No boasting rights before God. Some people came to Jesus in Matthew, the book of, uh, of Matthew, and they were boasting. Oh, Lord, we've done all these mighty works in your name. We raised people from the dead. We healed people. Well, not, you know, Satan can do those things too. <laughs> they were boasting about what they had done in his name, but in his name was, was, was just kind of an afterthought. The, the point was that what we have done, you see, if, you, if you're majoring on what you have done, you're boasting, and there's no boasting rights before God. Well, what did God say to those people in Matthew? I, I don't even know you. I don't know you, because if they're not the works of the Spirit within you, they're not, they're not good works. They're dead works. They're false works. They're not the works of the Spirit. So um, Jesus is pretty... I mean, he, his word is a, is a sharp sword. It divides the lie from the truth. It divides the soul feelings and soul thoughts from spirit reality. It's a divider. And that's what the word does for us. Now listen. So it's not by flesh effort works, which we have done, lest we should all sit around and boast about everything we've done. Well, that, it's not that way. Then what is it? For we are his workmanship. He has come inside of us. He's the one that's going to do the works. Who is this he? The Holy Spirit, he. <laughs> it's he that's in us. will do the works through us and by us, by faith. Wow. Will be our sanctification. Christ is my sanctification. Now let me, what is sanctification? My holiness. He is my holiness. And then I'm going to read another verse in, um, um, in, in, uh, in, Hebrews, the book of Hebrews. All right, I want to go into 1 Corinthians, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30. Listen at this. But of him, that's Christ, are you in Christ, Jesus, who of God, now God did this through Christ, he has made unto us wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, redemption. So what did you do to get do all that? What did you do to get that? What did you do to get redeemed? 
What did you do to be righteous? What did you do to have wisdom? What did you do to be sanctified, to be holy? Nothing. Christ, it's a free gift. Christ has given to you, given his righteousness to you uh, by faith. But no flesh will glory in his presence. The verse is that right before that. No, no flesh will glory in his presence. That's the point he's making in Ephesians. In Ephesians, it is saying we cannot boast because there's no flesh works that's going to boast in his presence. Okay. So he's already given it to you by faith. So it's not by works. It's not by trying hard. It's by moving into his rest because he has sanctified you once and for all. When did he do that? He did that at Calvary. He did that because at, at Calvary, he, he, he died to, um, to all the flesh works that you tried to do through your mentality, fallen mentality, of self-righteousness. He died to that. He died to sin. That is sin. All self-justification and all self trying to be righteous and flesh trying to be righteous apart from God died at Calvary. And through his resurrection, now you're raised a new workmanship with his spirit working in you, working out the good works that you're going to do, work being your peace, being your joy, being, you see Christ, you see joy, peace, love, joy, peace, long-suffering is all a person. It's the person that lives inside of you that is that. So we say, well, I, I don't know if I can believe that. Doesn't, that's, uh, that seems impossible. I don't feel that. We're so used to identifying ourselves with our feelings. We've got to get over ourselves so we can get on to what God says, so we can get on to understand the spirit truths about yourself. Now, I'm going to turn to Hebrews chapter 10. I have a really close friend that told me that one time my program was in Cincinnati, and he was in Cincinnati to do some work, and he heard me read this verse in chapter 10 of Hebrews. Now, Hebrews is talking about the death, the bodily death of Christ. Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 9 is talking about the blood. You see, we, we need to understand the communion, what happened in the communion. Okay, the blood of Christ, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. So people are not saved without the precious blood of Jesus. They're saved by the precious blood of Jesus. But also, we're sanctified by the body death of Christ. That's what people don't understand. That's what Christians don't understand. So through his body, he was made sin, and through his bodily resurrection, we are made his righteousness. That's, that's how it works. And that is your sanctification. He is your sanctification. Sanctification is not a thing called holiness. It is a person called Mr. Holy Spirit himself. We've got the spirit of holiness in us already. That is, he is your holiness. Now, let me read you this. Therefore, uh, this is verse 5 in Hebrews chapter 10. Wherefore, when he came into this world, he saith, Sacrifices and offerings thou wouldest not. Now, I'm not going to receive that. But a body that has prepared me. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sins thou hast no pleasure. Nor does God have any pleasure in your own flesh works. I can tell you that. None whatsoever. And he says in verse 7, For lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do thy will, O God. And what is what was his will? Above when he said, sacrifices and offerings and burnt offerings and for sin, thou wouldest not. Neither would thou take pleasure in it, which was offered by the law. Of course, this is talking about the Mosaic law. And, of course, we have a better covenant, which is the new covenant. And it fulfills the old covenant, the Mosaic covenant, because we have a new promises in Christ. And this is what they are. Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. This is Jesus saying this to God the Father. He taketh away the first, which is the old covenant, and that he might establish the second and fulfill it and establish it and fulfill it in us by establishing it by fulfilling in us. How? By which will? In other words, by what covenant? By his covenant we are sanctified, made holy, 
through the offering of the body of Christ once for all. Uh, wow. Now listen to that. By the new covenant will, because that's what the new covenant is, the last will and testament, we are sanctified, made holy, not we have to be, we've got to work hard to be, I've got to do things to be, I've got to run to church to be. I mean, we can do all those things if we're led by the Spirit. Do what you're, if you are led by the Spirit of God, please do those things. If you are not led by the Spirit of God, you're free not to. You're free to or free not to. Do you hear me? That's what freedom is. The truth is, we are sanctified. You don't have to make yourself sanctified. You don't have to work hard at it. You don't have to strive and try and work hard. You, it, you were sanctified through the offering of Christ through the new, new covenant will, which is the new will and testament. Through his will, this is what he has offered you by faith. Just to take it by faith. I have your sanctification. I already have your holiness. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. I might not feel holy today. I don't know if I'm acting it out too well, but I'm not going to look at that. I'm just going to look at what you've promised me, and I'm going to receive it by faith. That's how faith works. Now, look at verse 14 of the same chapter. For by one offering, by one time, that's why Moses couldn't go into the promised land. He struck the rock twice, like crucifying Christ twice over and over again because we don't believe it. Do you realize we're like Moses? We, you won't go into your promised land either of rest as long as you have to work out your own salvation by flesh efforts. Don't you know the next verse in Philippians says, for it is God in you that is working and willing of his good pleasure in you. Okay, verse 14. For by one offering, once he has perfected, he has completed and perfected forever them that just simply take just, uh, sanctification by faith. That Christ is my sanctification. You take that by faith and God has forever perfected you. And he did it once, and all, once by his bodily death. And that's why I always bring out, I, I like to teach his body death. I, I hardly ever hear, I don't think I've ever heard it, really. I haven't ever heard it on TV. It needs to be taught what happened in his bodily death. Well, it says in 2 Corinthians 5.21 that God the Father made Jesus sin, who knew no sin. He was a sinless sacrifice, but he was made sin. He was a sin offering. And God the Father put sin on him. Well, sin is, is all the satanic realm that we fell into. So he made him sin. Made him. We, we can't even imagine what that was like. We cannot even imagine. And why did he do that? He knew no sin in order that we might be made the righteousness of God. So righteousness never comes by your good works. Uh, uh, we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus. Now I've got to read this last verse and talk about it. In, uh, uh, it's really the 10th verse, not the last verse of the chapter. It says in verse 10, For we are his workmanship, his workmanship. In other words, he is willing and doing and working within us. That's what we have to work out of us. We have to work out of us because we don't believe it. We think we have to work it out. No, it's him. We have to work out his life, his peace, his love. So you have a problem. I don't love somebody. I say, oh, I'm going to work his love out of me. So therefore, I, I, I'm going to take it by faith. I have love for that person, even though I don't feel it. Oh, that person has did something bad to me. I'm going to work out his forgiveness. He's in me. He's Mr. Forgiveness. Oh, thank you. Our, so I'm going to take it by faith. I'm together with his forgiveness. I'm joined together with his forgiveness. So therefore, I forgive by faith. You see, everything, this is walking by faith, standing by faith, knowing everything that you have is by faith. You're justified by faith. You're sanctified by faith. You're glorified by faith. There is no flesh works. No flesh will glory in his sight. So there's no way to work your way to heaven on any level of our salvation. All right, verse 10. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works. In other words, the good works will flow naturally, spontaneously. The good, what are those? Well, it might just start out being peace. Oh my gosh, I've got peace with God. Wow, I've got peace. Peace, will, peace of mind is absolutely my 
goodness, in this day and time, do people not want peace of mind? Do you realize that comes by his peace within you, giving you a new mind? And therefore, it's his working in you that's peace in the first place. And love, love people that I've never loved before or couldn't even love myself. That's his love and workmanship inside you. Now listen, in rest, this is what we can take. And I love this part. Last part of this verse says, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Not shall walk in them like it's a law, but should. It's a promise. It's a promise. When he will walk in you, he will cause you to be the righteous person that he has recreated you to be. He's regened you to be a righteous person. Wow. It's, a, it's your new nature. And guess what? The old nature was crucified with Christ. The old nature's gone. And the new nature is in. Get to know that divine nature within you. It's Christ within you. The fullness of Christ with all love, all peace, all joy, because it's in you. In you when you feel the opposite. Now, your opposite feeling should be there. But you're going to feel the opposite. You take what God says is true about you. Don't make him a liar. And, and I'm telling you, it will manifest peace, joy, love. The fruit will match up with the with the root the root is christ the fruit is his workmanship inside you and it's all by faith all by grace all by his love and mercy so thank you for joining me and i'm going to continue this next time on the liberating secret goodbye i hope that you are being blessed by the liberating secret if you would like to have for yourself my books booklets or any of my tv or radio series check out our website's bookstore. Our TV shows are also on our YouTube site. And be sure to get the Liberating Secret app for your phone. We have an annual Louisville conference in June, as well as a biannual Women's Retreat at Polly's Island, South Carolina. Come for a weekend or a week of study, fun, fellowship by the ocean. We also have a weekly Bible study See our website for times and location. My husband and Scott and I would love to come and share the liberating truth to your fellowship, church, or home group. Please call or contact us through the website. If you would like to donate to our ministry, make your checks out to Christ Our Life Ministries, Post Office Box 43268, Louisville, Kentucky, 40253. Please pray for us, and we will pray God's very best for you.